why, Keith Lilly, did you feel that this was a perfect study for Beyond Text, that the Gulf map really does speak to us? Well, maps fundamentally fascinate everybody. Uh, I mean, this is why we have television programmes on maps. The Gulf map is a depiction of Britain and the surrounding lands, including parts of the near continent and Ireland, the coastal Ireland. It's a medieval map, a late medieval English map, as far as we can tell, probably dating to around about 1370s, 1380s, at least based upon the paleographical evidence that the project's been looking at uh, through the work of Elizabeth Solopova. Why is further research needed? I mean, this was donated by Richard Goff to the Bodleian, where That's we're right. standing now, mm. in the early 19th century. It's been around, it's been studied for a long, long time. Why is further research needed? It's been studied, but not necessarily systematically. Um, so there have certainly been scholars interested in the map since, well, even before the time when Richard Goff bequeathed it to the Bodleian Library. So even in the 18th century, in fact, that's the, the time when the map first really appears. Between the 14th century or 15th century and the 18th century, it almost seems to disappear. But in the mid-18th century, antiquarians display the map to the Royal Society of Antiquaries in London, and from then on, it does get uh, picked up by academics and by scholars. I did my first degree in Moscow University. My background is in medieval literature and linguistics, but also very much in manuscript studies. The study of handwriting can show us the date when the document was written, but also often the location where it was written, because uh, scribes had different training and used to write in different ways in different parts of the country. Which was obviously far more noted in medieval times than it is ever now in the last... Yes, few. scribes were professionals and uh, they had a training and practices were somewhat different in different parts of the country. The exciting thing about Beyond Text is that it made me think differently about the map. Uh, there's been a tendency amongst academics to view maps as texts, but that's falling within a kind of textual paradigm. Uh, and we wanted to say, well, let the map speak. What story does it tell us? And the story it tells us really comes through looking at the content of the map, in particular the place names, the writing on the map, as well as moving away from this idea that maps are text. Your maps, it has been said, are arguments, even conversations. They do Good speak. So, so there's some interesting conceptual or theoretical ideas that I think we need to, to engage with, and the, and the Gulf map and beyond text gives us that opportunity. But we need the empirical evidence. We need the, we need the paleographical study. Perhaps the most exciting discovery is to do with the study of the manuscript. Previously, scholars believe that the map was produced as a result of a single production campaign that it is essentially in the hand of a single scribe. But as a result of my study, it became clear that the map was very substantially altered or revised probably within 50 years after its making. So it was produced in the second quarter of the 14th century. So you're and suggesting then, that it was, it was designed and, 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 and set by one individual? and then altered many years later, is that what you're uh, saying? Probably not by one individual, because at least a scribe and an artist were involved, but it probably was altered by a single individual in the first quarter of the 15th century. So that was one of your most exciting yes, revelations? Yes, it was. It was. Uh, one of the problems before was that scholars tried to date what is essentially a mixture of two hands which are not contemporary. So trying to take into account in paleographical dating rather conservative features, but also features which are 50 years uh, later. So that and is really quite an exciting this revelation. This is a very ex exciting revelation. Yes. But talking about speaking, the mm. map speaking to you, I'm mm. going to put you on the spot mm. and say, is there any part of the map that truly speaks to you, that every time you look at that bit of East Anglia, maybe, or Cornwall, sure. that is really sweeping through the centuries? Right. Well, for me, personally, uh, I have a strong affiliation to the Midlands, <laughs> and Coventry, my hometown, is represented on the map. 
Um, one of the things that's made me curious about the map is the choice of the places shown by it. So Coventry is shown as a walled town, which it was in the mid part of the uh, 14th century, it was beginning to be. But the other settlements around Coventry, some of them are missing, which some of the places you might have expected to be there are not. For example? Kenilworth with its castle, whereas other places are there, including Coombe Abbey. Now, you know, Coombe Abbey is a Cistercian, it was a Cistercian monastery, but it's no, it's no great monastic foundation, and yet it is on the map. And there are various other places like that, and it just makes you think, well, whoever produces map, why, why did they choose those places? Is it because they represent a, a local body of knowledge that was important in the construction of this map. So the curious absences, and I, I think about that particularly whenever I look at those places, those are the kinds of questions that come into my mind. There are areas of the map in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire which seem to reflect the interests of um, its patrons because it, it is more detailed, yes, and the offices of the central government in the late 13th, 13th century and in the 14th century seem to have employed uh, lots of men from the north as a result of um, wars with Scotland at that time and because the kings of England travelled to the north and York was used as a second administrative centre, the government officers had many educated young men uh, from the north working in them and it seems that their interests are reflected in the map, that this is what explains interest in the north and rather precise depiction of uh, Yorkshire and Lincolnshire because many of them were from these areas. It is a very enigmatic uh, artifact and it is something that was produced with great care and with a lot of effort and something that was produced for practical use. I don't think it was ever designed to be a decoration. It was made to be used probably by a government office as an aid for administration and then it continued to be used and continued to fascinate people centuries afterwards.